As you know, we love to cruise. And normally, we're pretty fond of our fellow cruisers. After all, we share the same passion. But on our last couple of cruises, we've noticed some really annoying cruise behavior, and it seems to be on the rise. So we put together this video to help put an end to these cruisers behaving badly. So we have a look at the 15 annoying cruise behaviors that need to stop up next. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one board at a time. Now let's just dive right into this list of the annoying cruise behaviors. That way we can help us all have an amazing cruise. And we're gonna start with probably one of the biggest offenders, especially if you're cruising in the Bahamas or the Caribbean, or really anywhere warm. Of course, many of us go on a cruise for some sun and relaxation. And of course, the cruise lines have a variety of outdoor spaces. But even on the newest ships, sometimes getting prime outdoor seating can be a challenge. Well, this becomes even more difficult by those deck chair hogs. And I'm looking right at you. If you're one of them, you know what I'm talking about. There's probably nothing more annoying than hogging deck chairs. So what do these individuals do? Well, they wake up early in the morning and claim several deck chairs with towels and personal items like bags, and then they don't return for hours. We see it on every trip. In fact, our last Bermuda cruise, the offenders were outrageous. And all the deck chairs on the main pool area and the sun deck above were claimed within like the first 45 minutes of the sun deck, even opening up in the morning. And while these chairs are claimed and these individuals are off exploring other areas of the ship or going back to sleep or getting breakfast, I don't even know where they are, other cruisers who are up and ready for the day are continuously roaming the sun deck looking for available loungers. Now, the cruise lines are trying to crack down on this behavior. Many cruise lines do deploy staff who remove unintended items that have been left on chairs for long periods of time, but this is still not a perfect system. Still, another thing that we found out is once other cruisers catch wind of these deck chair hogs, more and more individuals come out later in the cruise and do the same exact thing. Please, only reserve loungers when you and the rest of your party are actually ready to use them. Please also be courteous and remove your items when you're done using the loungers. These are some just basic cruise manners, which will allow others to actually enjoy the space that you vacate. Another behavior that just drives us totally insane on a cruise has to do with the elevator. Now on a cruise, we try to cut some individual slack because we understand some people are new to cruising, but we're pretty sure most people have used an elevator, at least on land. So it really surprises us when on a cruise ship, some people don't follow basic elevator etiquette. And I'm sure you've been there before. So here's some advice. When an elevator door opens, first let individuals get off the elevator before you attempt to get on the elevator. Somehow, these elevator rushers haven't learned this simple logistic. Instead, what do they do? Well, as soon as the elevator doors open, they barrel themselves through the offloading passengers, ensuring they get a spot. It's actually even worse when these annoying cruisers step right in front of other cruisers, obviously waiting for the same elevators. We know getting elevators on mega ships can be a challenge. This is especially true at peak times, like coming back from a port of call or after a show is finished. But please be courteous. Give those on the elevator time to debark. Then politely step on board and squeeze in with everyone else who's also been waiting just as long as you. If nothing else, you can always wait for another lift or walk to another bank of elevators away from the crowds. Most cruise ships have at least two banks of elevators, one forward and one aft. We know packing for a cruise is never easy. Thankfully, the cruise lines often provide some guidance on what you should pack for your next trip. And of course, we have plenty of packing advice right here on our channel. Now, along with what you need to bring with you on a cruise, cruise lines also typically let you know what is not allowed to bring on your cruise ship, what items are prohibited. Now, you need to follow that advice because if you don't, well, you could get into some serious trouble. And while it varies from cruise line to cruise line, among many of the commonly banned items, including
include irons and steamers, candles, and bottles of liquor. Plus, regardless of your state laws, cruise ships do not allow illicit drugs. Still, we always laugh at the end of the cruise when we see the naughty table. This table is filled with all the contraband the cruise line has confiscated from other cruisers. So nothing is more annoying than cruisers who flagrantly ignore these restrictions and try to sneak items on board. You know who you are. Along with potentially getting barred from the ship, trying to bring prohibited items just prolongs the entire embarkation day process. It makes the crew spend extra time scanning luggage and it will hold up your bags being delivered to your stateroom. Please read your cruise line's restrictions and don't attempt to bring something that's not allowed. If you want to drink something other than the typically allowed bottles of wine, consider purchasing a cruise line drink package. Or if you really need your clothes pressed, your cruise line likely either has laundry services or self-service laundromats on the ship. The last thing you want to do is jeopardize your vacation by trying to sneak banned items on the cruise ship. Even at sea, you can't avoid those who find issues with everything, whether it's the food, or the temperature in the theater or their cabin, they're there to complain about everything and complain to anyone who will listen. And usually they do it in not so nice terms in an elevated voice. Plus they're quickly to loudly let all the staff and other passengers know all about their problems. These constant complainers make it a point to pick at everything. And they're often rude, demeaning, and very demanding when dealing with the crew. Undoubtedly, we have walked past passengers on every cruise who are complaining and not such nice words about some aspect of the vacation. Please don't be that person. Now, we're not saying you shouldn't bring up issues to the crew. That's not what we're saying at all. The staff at guest services are there to ensure your cruise is memorable. Plus, keep in mind, we all make mistakes. So if something isn't right, by all means speak up, but there's no need to do it in a mean or condescending manner. Please avoid the temptation to raise your voice or use foul language when trying to explain what went wrong. Also, make sure you're raising your concerns to the right crew member who can actually rectify the issue. In the Cruise Line's app and the paper daily, the Cruise Line provides you with important information like the port arrival time as well as the time you're due back on board. Now, it always gets to me whether it's the time zone changes or not knowing what ship's time is or maybe it's having one too many drinks at the bar, but inevitably some cruisers don't make it back to the ship on time. Thus, when the ship is preparing to leave, you may hear some names called over the loudspeaker. While the captain might wait a few minutes for those not on board, there is a schedule they need to follow to ensure an on-time arrival at the next port of call. Of course, if there's a delay with the cruise line shore excursion, every effort is made to wait for those guests. But right around or past the all aboard time, that's when the pier runners make an appearance. It is then where you might see those tardy parties making a mad dash for the ship. If someone's late getting back to the ship and they're a pier runner, and it happens on your cruise, make sure to get some video and post it to social media. Whatever you want to do, don't be one of those people holding up the ship's departure. You don't want to be the one taking the walk, or should we say run, of shame. Our tip is to use the manual mode on your phone and set it to the ship's time. You should also take a picture of the front of the daily so you know the exact all aboard time as well as the address of the port. When venturing out on your own, we always make sure to give ourselves at least 45 minutes before the all aboard time as a buffer just in case. If there are unexpected delays that get you back to the ship late, it might find the ship has set sail without you. On the last night of your cruise, the guest services line might be the most happening spot on the ship. There could be several reasons why cruisers are in line, but probably there will be a few cheapskates there. These individuals will act either surprised or dismayed to find that there are daily charges, usually around $15 to $18 per day per person on their bills. Some cruise lines refer to these as gratuities. This cheapskate will ask to have these charges removed from the bill. They claim they don't know about them or they'll be tipping people individually. 
This is a personal pet peeve of mine when I hear someone is removing the gratuities. These daily charges go to the crew you see and some of those behind the scenes that you don't who work hard to make your crew's vacation amazing. Some of these crew members include stateroom attendants, dining room staff, and individuals in the buffet. Yes, I've heard the excuses that the cruise line takes a cut of these service charges or individuals claiming they tip people they want directly or that the cruise line should pay their employees more. While those may or may not be true, when budgeting for your cruise, the gratuities should really just be considered part of the cruise fare. We prepay these costs and then tip in addition the crew members who provided exceptional service during our cruise and we highly recommend you do the same. Now the next behavior is not only really annoying, it's also just wicked gross. Even before the cruise restart, frequent cruisers knew about Washi Washi. Heck, Royal Caribbean has a whole song dedicated to reminding individuals to wash their hands. Cruise ships have had hand sanitizing stations everywhere, especially in front of the restaurants for years. High traffic areas like buffets often also have hand washing stations at the entrance. Given the last few years that we all went through, many of us are even more focused on health and hygiene while cruising. Yet others seem to have slept through health class. Yes, even with all of these reminders and easy access, there are still plenty of individuals that do not wash or sanitize their hands. These people ignore the crew member's suggestion to wash their hands and walk straight into the venues. Sometimes they're even rude or make curt comments as they walk by the obvious stations. Even worse are those who leave the bathroom without washing their hands. Again, that's just gross, whether you're at land or sea, but somehow we've been seeing this more and more on our recent cruises. Whenever we see someone ignore washing their hands, we just take some extra dabs of hand sanitizer ourselves, and we make sure to avoid touching anything those other individuals put their hands on. Cruise lines offer a variety of dining options. From quick service venues to the buffet, there'll be several restaurants that are self-service. Just because it's self-service doesn't mean you can just walk up there and grab things with your bare hands. Yet for some cruisers, these dining venues are just a free for all. These grabbers go in for a slice of pizza or they just take a few cookies sans the serving utensils. There's Probably nothing more disgusting. Well, no, it's actually more disgusting to not wash your hands, but then doubly disgusting to not wash your hands and then just go take some food from a tray or a station without using the proper spoon, spatula, or tongs. And sadly, as these more casual service venues pop up on cruise ships, we see more and more people just grabbing food directly from these different areas. Now, you can't make an excuse that they're wasn't a serving utensil present. If there isn't one there, you can simply ask one of the crew members to get one for you. The food isn't going anywhere, so you can wait a few moments while a crew member brings over something you can use to properly put food on your plate. I'm sure we're gonna rattle some feathers here with this next one because we see this behavior all too often across all cruise lines and age groups. In fact, sometimes you see the older cruisers engaging in this behavior more than younger cruisers. And that's probably because if you're a frequent cruiser, you know that to get premium seats at Signature Entertainment, you need to get to the venues early. We always show up to venues about 30 minutes prior to showtime to get our preferred seating section. With our seats secured, again, there's two of us, one of us might go to the bar or run out for a quick bathroom break before the show starts but we're never far from our seats for a long period of time. But then, oh, then there are the seat savers. These individuals are the lone person from their party sent into the theater early for the family, and they're tasked with saving multiple seats. Heck, we've seen people try to save six or more seats in a row, like basically try to claim the whole row in the theater. And of course, this person has to dodge other cruisers, keep telling other people that, oh no, no, those seats are taken. Then this becomes increasingly annoying as the theater begins to fill up closer to showtime. Even when the crew staff announces that there's no saving of seats, these annoying cruisers still persist. And honestly, the cruise lines never really make them cave. That's when other cruisers, well, they begin to 
give these seat savers some real attitude. They call over the staff, sometimes verbal arguments ensue, and then it just gets a little awkward for everyone. Of course, this can easily be avoided. All cruisers need to do is wait until their entire family is ready for the show, then you all head into the theater together, and then your entire party can get seats together and you can avoid any headaches. While we try to avoid them, queues do form on modern megaships. Whether it's in the buffet or before a show, lines pop up from time to time. Now I feel like I'm a first grade teacher here, but there's nothing more frustrating than when other cruisers pretend they don't see the line and walk right in front of everyone else. That's right, they just cut the line. To be fair, typically someone in the line will call them out. Or they'll ask, is this the line to get into the theater? Then they seem surprised when others answer, yes, this is the line. With a little tone implying, get behind me, buddy. We all learned back in grade school that there's no cutting in line. So resist the temptation to follow suit and go around people like they don't exist. Everyone can see you. This behavior is especially frustrating at the elevator. And we just talked about this a little while ago. Several people will come from behind you when the elevator doors open and they get ahead of those clearly waiting. Oh, it just drives me up a wall. If you need to play a little defense or block out those cutters, hey, go for it. We don't recommend getting confrontational, but stand your ground and let them know you've been waiting so they can too. Yes, your cruise vacation is a time for you to unwind and relax. Azara, the trip is going somewhere warm and tropical. Along with the sun, you're probably looking forward to some umbrella drinks, a few frozen cocktails by the pool, wine at dinner, and hey, even a few drinks at the karaoke bar. I'm not going to judge. It's perfectly fine to enjoy yourself on the cruise, but please try not to overdo it. While everyone's tolerance for alcohol is different, know yours before ordering too many rounds. Getting overly drunk on a cruise ship is extra dangerous. Remember, you're on a moving vessel. Plus, it's extremely annoying for everyone else. Perhaps the worst part about getting drunk on a cruise is the potential that you're gonna ruin your vacation. We have seen some cruisers have one too many and then waste days of their vacation trying to recover. Mixing the motion of the ocean with too much alcohol can be a really bad combination for some. Yes, we know, you have the drink package, but you want to remember the trip, right? You can still get your money's worth and have a blast without being blackout drunk. Whether at land or at sea, nowadays it seems like you can't go anywhere without having at least one person engaged in a loud call on their cell phone. I know I'm not alone when I say it's even more distracting on a cruise ship when these individuals are engaged in a loud video call or phone call in a public area. They might be walking around the ship, waving their hands, yelling into their phones. They're weaving in and out of the crowds. Plus everyone can hear and see their conversation. And honestly, we don't want to. When do we lose any sense of our surroundings? Of course, if you wanna share your cruise vacation with those at home, by all means do so. But don't be distracting to other cruisers. Ask yourself, do you really need to have that conversation right now? I'm pretty sure that's what video and photos are for. You can take them during your trip, record the moment, and then you can share it with individuals at a later time. If you need to call someone, try to do it in a private place, not the middle of the promenade or the main theater right before showtime. Almost everyone on the cruise ship is looking to have a good time. Well, besides those who are complaining that we talked about earlier. It is a vacation. So we understand that some people will want to let loose. What is not understood are the individuals who feel they need to yell, scream, or swear at every event. Yes, those hecklers make it a point to be loud and usually obnoxious, whether on the pool deck or in the atrium. Their voices can be heard over the rest of the crowd. Please try to be mindful of the situation and show your excitement in appropriate ways. Yes, you can cheer on your friends in the sexy leg competition or give a standing ovation for the headliner act. 
If you're at the glow party, feel free to sing at the top of your lungs along with everyone else. But don't yell obscene and inappropriate things during the love and marriage game show. Or don't try to heckle the comedian or main theater entertainers. You're not as funny or as witty as you think. If you don't like something or you take offense, simply just leave the venue and go do something else. You're on a cruise ship after all. There's tons of activities to enjoy. We understand that it takes some people a bit longer to walk around the ship or that you're on vacation, so you may not be in a hurry. It's perfectly fine to take your time when heading off to your next stop. What is not fine is when you and your whole family take up the entire hallway. While you might want to take your time, others don't want to be stuck behind you. So just stick to one side of the walkway to allow others to pass. Think of it like a highway. There are cruisers going at all different speeds, so let's give each other space. Let's create some lanes here. Nothing is more frustrating than getting stuck behind a group of what I like to call shufflers, or those going at a snail's pace when maybe you're already late for your dinner reservation or trying to grab seats at a bar. So please just be mindful of other cruisers and do not block the entire walkway. And of course, the same is true on the other end of the spectrum. If you do walk fast, Please be mindful of other people. Don't try to barrel your way through crowds or to bump in individuals thinking you're the only one who's trying to get to the show or to dinner. Let's all just be mindful of each other. That way everyone can have a great cruise. Then, well, there are those people who take videos and photos of everything. They spend 10 minutes finding the perfect lighting for that photo of their Caesar salad in the main dining room. They get to the front of the crowd at Sailaway for video and pictures or they walk right by others to get a shot of the empty bar. Perhaps they're obnoxiously trying to find the best angle to capture the main theater show. You might notice these influencers making their way around the ship at odd hours of the day. They might be talking to their phones or holding contraptions that include lights, microphones, and other attachments. Hopefully they're not too intrusive and do not distract from your overall enjoyment of a cruise. If you do see an influencer who's being intrusive, let them know. Yep, we admit it. Sometimes we too are those annoying cruisers. After all, no one is perfect. But as content creators, we do our best to be discreet and not interfere with others' vacations. We want everyone around us to have just as much fun as we're having. Now, of course, if there's other rude, annoying behavior that you see on a cruise ship, let us know in the comment section down below. And now that you know the behaviors you should avoid on your next sailing, we need to find you the perfect cruise ship. Well, lucky for you, right here on YouTube, we have a look at the top nine newest cruise ships. That's right, we sailed on nine of the newest cruise ships and we rate them just for you. Find out which ship has the best dining, the best entertainment, the best staterooms, and more that way you can pick the perfect vessel and your next cruise will be smooth sailing.